A-B testing definitions, A-B, multivariate, split, ROI, KPI, lift, significance. There's a lot to know in the testing industry. Let's define some of the key concepts in the conversion rate optimization world. Today we're going to walk through a bunch of definitions that the industry uses in, for A-B testing and conversion rate optimization. If you like what you see, please hit the like button. Also, I post new videos every Thursday, so subscribe to my channel to get the latest videos hot off the press. A lot of these topics require their own video or own article on explanation, so these definitions will be brief. The first definition we're going to cover is the high level of what we do. You hear lots of things, A-B testing, split testing, multivariate testing, landing page optimization, growth hacking, or just experimentation. All of these are just ways of saying, hey, we're running tests, we have variations, and we're learning with variations about our audiences using our, our metrics. Let's talk about types of tests. So you have A-B testing, which is having one or more variations, an A and a B. It's often also called A-B-N because there's an infinite number of combinations you could have. If you have three variations, you have A-B-C. If you have four variations, you have A-B-C-D. Split testing is almost just like A-B testing. In fact, many people define it exactly the same way. A split test is often referred to as an A and a B, and often those are full page changes. A multivariate test is when you have multiple elements and you have multiple variations of that element. So if you have two elements, and three variations of each of those two elements, you have a two by three test. You can look at the results in a full factorial or partial factorial way, and the value of running a multivariate test is it tells you the influence of elements. A landing page test is when you're testing the first page of the visitor's experience. A landing page could be the home page, or it could be a single standalone page that you're testing with variations. A personalization test is when you target one specific audience, and you're showing that one audience multiple variations, as you would for a true test. The difference with the personalization test is again, you're targeting one audience and not the entire population. A personalization target is when you're actually not testing something, but you've maybe learned through testing that something is working for one audience. And so you're serving that content to that one specific audience. Let's talk about the things you need to know when you're actually running a test. To begin a test, most marketers come up with a hypothesis. I prefer using a business question, but your business question or hypothesis is just what you would like to learn about, the thing that you would like to accomplish with this test. A roadmap is a series of tests that you have planned out coming in the near future. Your roadmap should be a living document that's ever changing as you learn, as you gather data, and as you run more tests. The control of the test is the variation that you're not changing. Sometimes it's called the champion because it's the previous winner from the previous test you've been doing if it's already been tested. The things that you're testing are called variations or experiences or challengers. An audience is someone who you are targeting the, the test to or someone who is being segmented in the results to identify what their behavior was like. You also have metrics, goals, and KPIs. A goal is something you're usually trying to accomplish with a test. A KPI is a key performance indicator, and they are the metrics that are most important to your business. A KPI is often broken down into a primary and secondary metric. When you run a test, you have a primary metric you're looking at to identify if the test was a success. We also use secondary metrics to understand the value of the test to understand how other things might have been impacted by the test, but they're not as important as the primary metric. Most tests that we look at are evaluated for success based on the rate. You might have an order conversion rate, or you have a click-through rate. All these rates are just taking that first metric divided by the number of visitors. So in a conversion rate, it's orders divided by visitors. In a click-through rate, it's clicks divided by visitors. In your test results, lift is the amount of increase or decrease that a variation had over the control. The calculation is defined as your new rate minus your old rate divided by your old rate. ROI is your return on investment, and this is usually calculated by understanding the cost that went into a test and evaluate that based on the impact, the upside impact that the test had. Annualized impact is taking your test result and annualizing that to a year so that you now have a comparable value across different tests. In testing, we talk about learning. What did you learn with the test? If you're doing your testing right, with every test, you're, you're structuring them to learn, not just to get lift. And so learning is an important part of each test. When you're running tests and looking at results, you need consistent data. And so you want to look at the trend. The trend is just the daily value of the conversion rates and seeing how that's impacted over time. Statistical significance is the statistical calculation to understand the repeatability of the value of that test. If there's a high statistical significance, it's likely that if you ran that test again, you would see the same results. If there's a low statistical significance, if you ran the test again, you would be unsure of the results because this, the statistics aren't saying that it's repeatable. Inside the statistical calculations, you have your confidence. The confidence is the likelihood that those results are repeatable. And you have your confidence interval, which is a range to show you that, you know, the more data you get, the more that interval will tighten up. And so your confidence interval is the likelihood of the high and low end of the outcomes of your confidence number itself. Okay, now we're going to talk about some terms just in the industry in general. 
Iteration is when you run one test, get results, and then you make changes and run another test and repeat that process. Correlation is when you see two things happening at once, but they're not necessarily causing each other. So this thing might be increasing with this thing, and those things are increasing about the same time, but they're not causing those things to happen. So correlation is something that it looks like they're trending together, but they don't necessarily mean they're causing each other to increase or to decrease for the same reason. Causation, on the other hand, is when you have two things, and when I increase this, this one increases as well because these two things are tied to each other. When I decrease this, this decreases. With testing, this is an important concept because if you run a test and you see a change with your variation, that change you made is causal data and is causing something to change with your visitor behavior. Variance is the noise that is in your test. Think of it as the natural fluctuations that are just part of each test. Qualitative data and research are things like usability studies, focus groups, surveys. It's that qualitative feedback that we get from people. Quantitative data is the data that comes from people's behavior, not what they say, but what they actually do. These are things like your analytics data, your testing data. Sometimes you can get survey data that has quantitative data. As you're testing, you may be interacting with different groups or people who have different skill sets that they bring to the testing program. For example, UX is your user experience team, and they often help design good experiences. You've got front-end and back-end developers, the different developers who are working on you know, the, the way the, the website looks and feels, and the back-end integrations that are part of that as well. IA is your information architecture group, and they often look at the way data is structured and, and how it should be accessed. Often you have usability teams, people who will go out and interview people to gather information about what people like and don't like in, in focus groups or in usability studies. There's also important definitions around page stuff. You've got elements, which are components of the page. You've got your CTA, which is your call to action or your buttons on the page that you want people to click. The fold is the part of the website that people see without having to scroll down. A funnel is a series of pages that people have to go through to get to the end conversion point. There are many other definitions you need to know. This is just a summary of the, the most common ones, the most basic ones that every conversion rate optimizer or, or A-B tester out there needs to know. So thanks for joining me and good luck with your testing.